What's up guys, Derek, moreplatesmoredates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Fenabut. So, some of you guys have probably seen my old Fenabut article I wrote back in 2016 or something like that and my video I posted then, which uh, is no longer up. The reason I took it down was YouTube was going through like this big phase of like crushing channels with uh, talking about um, drugs and stuff and I just you know like deleted it just in case it could have been an issue but I've since come to realize that as long as you uh, don't uh, promote its uh, you know glorify its use and whatnot it's perfectly okay to talk about your own experience with it so I'm um, just talking about my own experience with Fenabut I started using it back in 20 what was it 2012 probably and it was basically at the time I was looking for something that could be a alternative to alcohol that would still, you know, inhibit my inhibitions and whatnot, but not destroy my gains and make me feel like crap. And also allow me to still go out and function normally without being a sloppy mess. And Fenabut was one of the first things that really piqued my interest because it was uh, one of my close friends, uh, Chris Diotis from goodlookingloser.com. He outlined how it was basically a huge aid for him when he was going through his pickup phase and whatnot and how, uh, you know, good it worked that essentially interacting with the same receptors in the brain that alcohol does, but without, you know, hindering general, you know, motor skills and being, a, you know, destroyed mess of a person when you're trying to interact with women. Because obviously if you're hammered, you sound, you think you sound incredible and everything's coming off super smooth, but in reality, you're just like a fucking disaster. So Fenabut was one of the first pro-social you know uh compounds i explored in depth and i wasn't like a hyper responder to it because in general drugs like that affect uh those receptors i don't typically respond incredibly well to but basically i'm going to outline what i get out of it or what i got out of it i don't use it almost ever anymore but at the time it was a big part of my life because i was going out almost every single day and hitting on upwards of 20 to 30 women a day. And that was <laughs> something I highly recommend you guys get out as early in your life as possible because every single guy's got to go through that phase in life where if you get tied down too early, you're going to have some sort of regret later in life and wish you had that party get laid a lot phase of your life. And the best thing you can possibly do to get to a point where you're emotionally secure enough with yourself that you know if whatever chick you're with left at the drop of, the, of a hat, you could replace her with somebody just as good in a week. The only way you're going to get to that point of emotional security is by getting laid a ton with lots of hot women and mass, you know, getting rid of your social anxiety entirely and just, you know, going and hitting on tons of people and going on tons of dates. And this was a huge part of my life at the time to accomplish, help accomplish that phase because drinking wasn't something I wanted to do. I was also hardcore into bodybuilding at the time. And I just, even if I wasn't, alcohol is just a terrible option in my opinion. So Fenabut, I used, you know, I would typically take on an empty stomach. First of all, don't use it often. This is something that is often understated how potentially dependent you will become on it. And it's not necessarily that's inherently addictive. It's just that your body quickly develops a tolerance to it and accompanying withdrawal symptoms will occur if you use it too frequently and then you stop using it. So the thing I found completely baffling is the fact that many supplement companies were including it in their sleep formulas for daily use, which is incredibly irresponsible in my opinion, because this is something I would never use more than two times a week myself and is something I've never used more than two times a week because not only will you build a tolerance extremely quickly, but your body gets a dependence on it, like I mentioned. And the withdrawals aren't not, aren't like nothing to scoff at. Like this stuff is pretty powerful and the withdrawals that can occur are very similar to intense drug, you know, prescription drug withdrawals. And I'm sure, you know, somebody watching this video can attest to that where if you use it far too frequently and then you stop using it and you have some sort of dependence on it, the, you know, crash following it really is, you know, no, no walk in the park. So anyways, I use it responsibly off the get go and I would, uh, 
you know, go out with it. I would use it for um, hitting on women. I would use it for dates. I would use it for business presentations at school and university. I would also use it for job interviews, which I found, you know, super helpful. The best way I can describe how it feels is it's not like being high. It's not like euphoric as hell. Um, although some people do get music does sound way better on it for some people, not for me as very much, but what I, what you do get out of it that I found is when you're put in a position where your fight or flight would typically spike. So let's say you are going on a first date and you haven't been in the dating pool a while and you're, you know, you, it's very, very normal to be nervous, a situation like that or a job interview or like a big presentation that, you know, you have to nail things that would make your fight or flight just like spike and make you get really anxious, they're just curbed and everything's kind of smoothed out. Like I, I vividly remember sitting in job interviews and waiting to, you know, waiting for my turn to get interviewed by a panel of like four top people of the company or whatever. And normally I'd be, you know, a little bit fidgety, a little bit nervous, at least at the time before I had killed all my social anxiety through this like mass exposure period I did to anxious spiking situations <laughs> but that i remember specifically when i take fenibut and i'd go to those uh you know interviews or whatever i just be chilling in the waiting room just you know ready to roll and totally any any kind of it was almost like i could feel literally feel the suppression of my anxiety it was just like curbed normally i'd be like a little bit jittery a little bit nervous and i just remember sitting in the waiting room just in my, you know, suit getting ready for an interview and I'd just be chilling. I wouldn't be nervous at all. And I'd get in there and I was, it's a lot more easy to draw on creative thoughts when you're not nervous. Like whether some people think, I do think anxiousness brings out some people's higher quality work in some individuals or um, precipitates like very good results with some people who are good responders to anxiety. But being in general, being calm, cool, collected and relaxed in situations where your conversation skills are required is typically more ideal in my opinion as opposed to anxiety in like uh perhaps in a i don't know something adrenaline related where you're like jumping off like a cliff or something might be a bit different <laughs> but like as far as literally talking without stumbling over your words um, you know, losing eye contact with people, you know, not coming across as uh, fidgety, nervous. Uh, you can just tell by looking at somebody if they have social anxiety when you're speaking to them. Like a lot of, especially with girls, their intuition about guys who have anxiety when they're talking to them, it's just like the radar is way more perceptive than guys would think. And they can tell really easily if you're confident or if you're nervous. And with Fenibut, it was a, I'm not gonna lie, it was a big help in terms of uh, curbing that to significant extent. Over the years, I use it infrequently for uh, maybe once or twice a week. And then over the years, uh, progressively less frequently until I just wasn't using it at all. And frankly, now I barely use it maybe once or twice a year, if even. But at the time, it was definitely good if it lived up to the hype. In my case, probably not because the hype is typically over-exaggerated with a lot of people, but that is typically with individuals who are much better responders to certain drugs than I am. So, you know, for somebody like me who doesn't respond incredibly well to drugs in general, and by that I mean like mind-altering drugs, I don't like I'm not referring to anabolics or anything like that, although my genetic response is nothing crazy to those either. It produced a significant enough benefit for me to justify its use, you know, infrequently for however many years. And I probably use it on and off for three to four upwards of five years, especially for anything anxiety related, anything that would a social situation that would normally have me, you know, not performing optimally. Um, I would incorporate it. And obviously when you're doing this kind of like social exposure stuff all the time, every day, like hitting on tons of women, going uh, um, on dates all the time, you can't use this stuff every day because you're going to have a dependence issue eventually and likely some massive withdrawals. So I would still, you know, force myself to go days without that crutch. But then there was days where I felt the use was justified and I would, you know, use it responsibly and it worked well for me. So anyways, just be really cautious about using it guys. Cause 
you know, supplement companies, they'll sell you this stuff and not tell you about this like dependence that occurs and the effect that it actually has on the brain. And it's not a harmless supplement. It's just as, you know, it could be just as bad for you as, you know, a traditional, traditional like pharmacy drug that, you know, alters your mind or whatever. And it's not to be taken lightly. Like I definitely, you know, proceed with caution with this product. If you do end up using it, be conservative with your dosing. Do not combine it with alcohol because it's going to basically double how effective the alcohol is and get you hammered without even realizing that you're going to be hammered on that much. Like the They hit the same receptors in the brain. Keep that in mind. So when you have on Fenibut, alcohol will literally... Oh, and by the way, it's I believe it is Feni, Fenibut or Fenibut. And I've been pronouncing it wrong for about a decade almost. But... At the time, it's not like there's anyone there to correct me because no one was talking about this stuff back in 2012. So anyways, I've been calling it Fenibut all this time, so I'm going to keep calling it that. But anyways, definitely be extre- do not combine it with alcohol. It's going to, you'll get messed up if you combine it with alcohol and you'll get hammered way too easily. Don't drive on it. Definitely don't drive on it. There's, I actually know, I don't personally know him, but I heard a story of an individual who used, he fell asleep at the wheel on Fenibut and got in a big accident and totaled his vehicle and the reason is at high enough dose fenibut is an acute sleep aid and it'll literally knock you on your ass into a zombie like sleep for you know all night and that's why it's used in these sleep formulas by supplement companies who you know half-hazardly include it without realizing how potentially dangerous it actually is and i don't think it's that they don't like they obviously know it works for getting you to sleep but they don't realize the dependency your brain can develop to the stuff so Anyways, be cautious of it in that regard because it is a very, very powerful sleep aid at high enough dosages and your brain will get a dependence to it. And like I mentioned, as far as, you know, how it feels for me personally, it was just like a curbing of anxiety, nothing significantly better than that. And um, frankly, for what I was going for, that was perfectly sufficient. And I can't say I regret it to you. So it definitely helped me out of time and helped me push through some social, um, you know, anxiety plateaus I had in my life and uh you know that's just my basic outline of it I'm not going to get too much deeper into that because um there's not much else to say to be honest just be careful it's not something to be taken lightly and it's definitely a lot more powerful than it can come across in you know some advertisements from traditional over-the-counter supplement companies that probably shouldn't even shouldn't even be putting it in their product so thank you guys for watching please like subscribe check out my blog uh moreplatesmoredates.com uh follow me on instagram at moreplates underscore more dates snapchat twitter facebook etc talk to you guys soon